Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here. Now, recently I was lucky enough to shuffle off to London and play a little game called Pokemon Sun and Moon. And so I thought I'd sit down and tell you all about my experience with it, the things that I liked, the things that I didn't like, although do be prepared because I'm a bit of a Pokemon fanboy, so it's mainly going to be the things I like. This is all going to be unscripted and a little bit rough around the edges because I think that's the most sort of honest way of putting it forward in terms of video. Also, I'm low on time. If you want something with a little bit more structure to it, then you can click that card up there or the link in the description because I've done a written preview over on Nintendo Life and it's going to be very similar to this, so one or the other, or you can watch both well watch this one read the other one because you could watch it but it would be you wouldn't get much information out of it so pokemon sun and moon when i first managed to get my hands on the game one of the first things that i noticed was the fact that the camera angles for things like the cutscenes, you know like when you first see your character and stuff like that and you first get control when you're in your room the, the camera angles are very different they're much more dynamic than they were before on the whole when you're actually outside they're generally you know sort of the typical top down view but even then you know there's sort of subtle changes changes here and there, but the camera angles, you know, more often than not in cutscenes, put you into the action and you really feel like you're actually part of the experience and part of the story and all that, rather than just somebody sort of looking from up on high, sort of pulling the strings now and then to make the plot move along, which I really like because it's something that you see time and time again in loads of different RPGs. It's not something new, but it is something new to the Pokemon series. Had a bit of it in X and Y, but not enough really for my taste. This time, they've really got it right. This sort of naturalistic feeling with the camera angles and stuff like that in the presentation also extends to the actual landscape of the world. The Gone is the the grid system, it's almost entirely gone. As far as I know, I don't think I saw it once. The whole thing is just free to run around in any direction you want, and as such, everything looks much realer, for lack of a better word. Everything looks like it could actually be a real location, and even like the grassy patches and stuff like that, they're not on grids. It's just sort of like big sort of blobs and masses of grass and things like that. It's subtle, but it has a real impact, and I don't know, it just makes everything feel a little bit more organic, and it feels much more like it should do, considering it's 2016. And I mean, you know, I love Pokemon and the grid system worked back then, but X and Y, they really should have done this in X and Y, maybe. I don't know, they had too much to do, maybe. It does mean that some things have changed as well, actually. Um, one of the big things that has changed is the uh, trainer vision, if you like. Um, how trainers see you, if you like, when... <laughs> that's not what I mean. What I mean to say is the eye contact that you make with trainers that initiates a fight, you know, sort of, oh, I'm gonna throw a Pidgey at you and you're not gonna win and all that sort of rubbish. Um, that has changed quite a lot. It's now more sort of like a, a stealth-based system in a way. It's, um, I mean, that's kind of a grand grandiose term for it, but if you sort of, uh, it depends on your running speed, I think I got that feeling from it, but again, I did not play for very long, so I can't say for certain, um, but you can sort of avoid them, but it depends on whether you go in their line of sight, but also how close you are to them, and the game does a sort of like a vignette of the screen, so you can tell you're getting close to a trainer who's going to initiate a battle with you, and you can find a way around them, or you can just run in there and have that battle if you really want to take out someone's top tier Rattatar. Whilst we're on the topic of battles, actually, the other thing that's gone is gym leaders. Now, I think there have been a number of people who've been going, sort of, you know, they don't like change and things like that. And getting rid of gym leaders, you know, they've been in the game since the original. And some people are a little bit like, oh, don't get rid of gym leaders. They were great, blah, 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 blah. It's been replaced with these challenges that I believe are called trials. I'm, uh, I should have taken more notes when I was there. Anyway, the point is, whilst these do replace the gym battles and everything, they aren't really like them in any way, shape, or form. It's really weird, actually, um, but not in a bad way. Uh, the trial that I did, which was unsurprisingly the first one, uh, I went into this area and uh, it was like a cave and there were all these little holes, like, sort of scattered around, like little sort of nests or crevices, if you like where there were all these young goose and you had to go around and defeat the young goose individually. They weren't that powerful, but I think they were certainly above what you would find sort of in and around the grass in the local area. But um, the big thing about it really was is that there were no Pokemon actually in the cave bar them. It was just those young goose. So just walking around, you didn't encounter anything. So you didn't need to repel. You weren't bothered by any other Pokemon. And Team Skull appeared and they, <laughs> I love Team Skull because they really are really, really, Really ridiculous. Once I'd done all that stuff, I had to go and fight the totem Pokemon, which was a gumshoe. Gumshoes? I think it's a gumshoes, yeah. I uh, haven't learned the new names of these Pokemon very well. And um, 
this, this was the totem Pokemon, so it had some sort of aura, I think it boosted its defense, and it called upon other Pokemon to come along and fight alongside it. Although I don't believe you actually need to defeat the... Um, the supporting Pokemon. I think I just defeated the Gumshoes, but I don't think I got a choice either, so I think maybe I was using a move that did sort of like an area effect. I honestly can't remember. Um, again, yeah, it was... Th there was so much information going in, but the fact of the matter is, it was a pretty tough time... It was a pretty tough fight, but it wasn't absolutely ridiculous. It certainly wasn't like fighting a gym leader, but then again, it was only the first one, and although I didn't have any type advantage, I had been leveling the absolute little ass off my Rowlet, so it was pretty fantastic. There's also this different battle menu system where um, you can actually view the information of each move, like the description of every single move of that Pokemon at the moment without going into the summary, which is a really good addition because I forget what different moves do and things like that, and sometimes I get confused. And it's just nice to be able to check without sort of thinking and going through all those different menus and stuff like that. So it's really handy. It's just a shortcut. I think it's just holding L and then pressing A. I'm not 100% sure about that, but that's what I think it is. Also, once you've fought a Pokemon, let's say you've fought a young goose, it will tell you what moves that you have out that are, whether they're effective, not very effective, or super effective, or they have no effect, which is really handy, um, probably for, you know, players who forget the types and things like that of other Pokemon, which I admit I do sometimes do as well, I'm not perfect, and uh, so that is quite handy in a way, but for any, like, hardcore Pokemon gamers, it's, it's not anything useful, to be honest. What is useful, though, is your new Pokedex, and not because you can look at all the Pokemon, or how it looks, or anything like that, but because it's possessed by a Rotom, and that Rotom is actually like a little help helper character, so you can tap on the screen and it'll tell you what you're supposed to be doing, you know, going to the seaside, going to the... I was about to say the gym, but there are no gyms in the game. Nevertheless, the fact is that you can now get reminders of what you're supposed to be doing just by tapping the bottom screen, and that is so, so welcome. And when you're not tapping on the screen and Rotom's not talking to you, it's just a little mini-map. Like, standard mini-map shows you where you are, you know, proper Pokemon Go style. I kind of ruined that. Also, another thing I like is how the Alolan forms, they just re reveal them as Meowth appeared. It's not Alolan Meowth or anything like that. It doesn't make a big deal of it. It doesn't even, like, change the colour of the text to the name of the Pokemon. So that's quite nice. You know, it's just sort of, it's just Meowth, because in that context, in Alola, that is just a Meowth. That's a nice feature. I do like that. To sum up, honestly, Sun and Moon is genuinely looking extremely, extremely good. It's nothing absolutely out of this world. It's still a Pokemon game at the end of the day, but at the moment it's looking like it is going to be the most sort of heavy featured, the most sort of, uh, the most modernized version, which is what you'd expect, but it's just, it's nice and reassuring to play the game and realize that they have sort of listened to what the fans like, what they don't like, and they've improved upon it and they've made it really, really good. It's going to be very, very good. Also, by the way, I played Sun version. I wanted to play Moon, but they didn't have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you force yourself to do a very long video, even though you're not feeling particularly well and you're not really performing properly for that subscribe button. <laughs> and be sure to check out nintendolife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo